Part four, the piece of the puzzle that we're looking at right now that we need to fit in to discern truth from error in all how all world religions say that you have to do certain things to get close to God and all Christianity alone says you don't have to do those things because the works are finished for us by Jesus Christ. So George brought up a really good point in the last one, and I'd like you to re restate that question, George, because that's very important. That's going to segue into where we're going now. Why works? Hmm? Very good question. Why works? Um, and who gets to decide what list of works? Who very gets good. to judge what list of works? We're going to get into if, all of uh, Men are... And women are human beings like any other. Hold it. Who gets to decide? You're getting ahead of your, you're getting ahead of yourself. Let's go to the very beginning. In the beginning, God created Adam and Eve, right? And it's a beautiful, beautiful, uh, profound book that they keep finding. Really, is is uh, going to segue into all kinds of stuff. It's going to segue all. They're going to find all kinds of stuff in that book. Um, it breaks down some really profound things. It's not some just like little story of, you know, Adam and Eve and where and God. It talks about, it's, it says that in the beginning when God created Adam and Eve or formed them out of the dust of the ground, which is a f profound thought there, but we won't even get into the, the depth of that book right now. I'm just going to talk about... Uh, how man and mankind, men and women, ended up needing someone to do the works of God for them, Jesus Christ. They, why did we need a Savior? When it all started out so well with God making these little clay beings and putting them in charge over the whole world, and don't you know God just broke down all kinds of incredible stuff to them, like how light works and how dragonfly wings reflect light and how they could build, you know, um, anti-gravity machines and all kinds of stuff. I mean, all this knowledge was available to them as the sons and daughters of God, of the Most High God. So how did they get in a position where, how did they get us in a position where we as mankind needed a savior? So here's the way the story goes, is that this glorious being the tempter came to them. It's called the snake, um, the serpent, the beguiler, and offered them something. And I, I believe it was the enjoyment of evil is the best understanding of this. It wasn't an apple. It's never called an apple. It's called the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. So that can be translated. The best translation I've heard is this evil, the shining one. The angel of light said, listen, I'm going to show you evil and you're really going to like it. It's enjoyable. God is keeping this from you. Why is God keeping this from you? Why would God not want you to really fully enjoy your life? Why, what's he keeping back? Come with me and I'll show you. So they opened Pandora's box. They opened this door and they got trapped. They got trapped. And what the, I like to relate it to this. They lost the chip. They lost the uplink. They lost the link to God. Because God said, in the day that you eat of this fruit, in the day that you do this, you're going to lose the connection. Thou shalt surely die. Now, we know that they went on to live for, for quite a while in the Bible, hundreds of years. They had, they had Seth. They had um, the other kid. One of them killed the other. Cain and Abel. We'll get into this in a minute. So, but something in them died. It was their connection with God. I call it the chip, the link, it died. And then ensued also physical death after that. Because men and, men and women were originally created to live forever. We can already see. Yes, comment. Okay, yeah. To uh, compliment or add to what you were talking about, um, it says in the Bible, actually, that uh, God, after he formed Adam, he took Adam, the nostrils of Adam, and breathed into him 
the breath of life making him a living soul or human being living being Be good okay mm -hmm. so this loss of being connected with God or up being uplinked because uh, it's significant to that because he before this encounter with the snake God told Adam and Eve that in the day that you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil ye or you shall surely die so bam at that point that's where the connection disconnection occurred yes yes and I believe they lost the spirit part right now there's a lot of confusion now that's entered in it's gonna be one of these jigsaw pieces I think you're gonna like it and it's how the confusion between soul body soul and spirit has caused a lot of confusion to people thinks the soul lives on forever where it's actually the spirit part of us biblically in, in Christianity true Christianity is the spirit is eternal not the soul the soul simply means the life like George said the breath life in other words I am a living soul I don't have a soul that's eternal but I am a soul biblically there's this verse that says uh, it's talking about a shipwreck it's in the Old Testament and it says and some 400 souls died that day okay what does that mean does that mean they no longer were eternal beings they're just no it means they're they died they were beings they had breath life they these people died so the soul there's nothing that's eternal about it there's nothing that it's unique in that it's the it's also called the seat or the suke as the, the seat of your personality your soul it's who it's what makes Kata Kata that's my soul I've got my own little groovy vibe thing George has his that's his soul yes, it's his personality 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 of who you are mm -hmm. exactly from birth so, to mm -hmm. so we're all incredibly unique incredibly precious incredibly important to God and God wanted a family so he made these little clay beings I love to just pretend that you know we're these little you know clay beings and he's like oh he forms us out of the dust of the earth and we're not you know we're not just like little lozenges we're like incredibly like I said we have souls and we're fascinating and we're able to understand the sky's the limit with God as the creator teaching us and okay so here we are in Eden do 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 and he's created these he's like oh, okay go and just figure all kinds of stuff out and I'll be helping you and you know just do animal husbandry and learn how to you know create crops and garden and you know make this place like amazing you know and, uh, and then all of a sudden they're like oh the evil one told us that God's holding back on us so they get together like maybe we should maybe we should just like rebel against God you know so God says how are you doing today and they're going we hate you. I'm like what? I I love you. I love you. I love you. Why? Why you the lozenge? Just I love you. I created you. I love, we hate you. We're leaving. We hate you. We're out of here. So they don't want to walk with him anymore in the cool of the day, like Genesis says. They don't want to walk with God. And God's God goes after him still though. He's like Adam. Where are you? That's not a GPS. He didn't have. God didn't like, oh, my GPS didn't work today. I don't know where Adam went. Where's Adam? No, it was like, where are you? That was God, like, oh, longing for the loss because Adam had split out after the evil one. He wanted something else. So anyway, so when this happens, this cataclysmic thing that I don't think too, took too long because Adam and Eve hadn't even had children yet before they got deceived, when this happened, you see them, uh, they've covered themselves with fig leaves here. Talks about that. Well, John Lynn uh, does an excellent, uh, funny thing about this. He says, so they make themselves leisure suits of fig leaves. And God says, you know, mm, those are kind of out of style. They're green, bell bottom leisure suits. Here, let me make you some nice, let me make you some nice real clothing out of skins coats let me like you some coats because it does that and God made them 
clothing or coats, cloaks, out of animal skins. And John also does some funny stuff about this and says, it's not like he went up to animals and some foxes and said, hey, can I just borrow your coat for a while for a few days? I'm going to make some clothes. Yeah. No, he had the animals had to be killed, sadly, to make the clothes. So here is the first blood sacrifice. Now this is this is to be getting in to the psychology, to the deep um, physiognomy, our very beings, to understand that without the connection to God, we were screwed. We lost the chip, we were naked, we made fig leaves, ugly clothes. God had to come along. So this is a foreshadowing of the coming Christ, the sacrificial lamb who would have to shed his blood in our place to restore our relationship with God that he originally intended for us to be able to walk with him and talk with him and have perfect perfect communion relationship with God the creator of universes upon universes question mm -hmm. why did it have to be Jesus Christ why couldn't uh, say you or I or it could be anybody else it's a good question good question okay uh, when God says God's word cannot be break, broken. And that's one way that prophecies come true. God does not dictate every single thing. He is definitely a God of free will. So he lets Kate decide whether or not she's going to wear the blue soled shoes today or the other ones. Or the green scarf and the tan. He does not micromanage and dictate everything. But when there are certain things that have to go down for the restoration of his big plan, which is to get his family back. He wants his family back, right? So it is written, it was written that, the, that Christ would come out of the tribe of Judah, okay? Out of the house of David, all right? These had to, God had to set these all up so that Generation after generation after generation, God saw into the future or saw, I don't know if he sees simultaneously or how he sees, but this had to happen in that order. It had to happen in that way because it had already been written. Also, Jesus Christ was the only one who could buy us back with blood, and we'll talk about more that, about that later, why it had to be blood, but this is setting the precedent. The, the coverings of of animal skins is setting the precedent for, into our minds to understand that it had to be blood. Uh, Leviticus says the life is in the blood. It had to be a life for a life. It had to be a ransom. It had to be an exchange. We were completely without a chip. We were in the grips of the evil one. He owned us, lock, stock, and barrel. So without a perfect substitute with perfect blood out of the lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah from the house of Deva, David, okay? But also, this, this guy, Jesus Christ, had the guy to redeem us had to have perfect blood, sinless blood. That's what was happening when Mary had this angel come to her and said, Blessed are you among women, for that child that's in you is of the Holy One. And she knew that had been written about. It is written, it is written, it is written that, that, that a virgin would be born, would, would, a virgin would have a child and call his name Jesus, which means God with us. Okay? She knew about all this. So when the angel showed up and said, mm, You're the one, she said, Be it unto me. She had that much faith in the scriptures, in how this was going to come down. She said, be it unto me according to the will of the Lord. She was willing to be the one to have the Savior. So it's God's sperm, God's perfect blood was put in her. It wasn't like some weird, creepy thing where God had sex with Mary. God just supernaturally, boom. But his uh, God does not breach, does doesn't do weird things like that. He's God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. 
He cannot even exist. He, he can help people when they're in darkness, but he never meddles in that stuff. He, he's completely opposite of light. He is, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So nothing weird happened with Mary. She just supernaturally had God's, uh, the sperm, the sperma. Uh, does that answer that? Mm -hmm. A little bit? But, but backing up even further, I mean, mm -hmm. the Jesus coming out of uh, the lineage of David uh, is hundreds of years after the fact of uh, Adam and Eve. Um, but a lot occurred and um, gets to the point of why works-based religions have, they don't work. Mm -hmm. there, there's too many fallacies to it and there's a reason that it had to be Christ. Mm -hmm. um, even though there was mm -hmm. centuries and centuries and centuries of opportunities for uh, average ordinary men and women, Abraham, um, there's a reason. Well, Abraham achieved righteousness, but not through works, but by faith in the coming Christ. So we'll see a pattern about that. And, and we're going to get into that in our very next. We've got great visuals for our very next one. But let me just rip through this really quick in this one, okay? The first sacrifice, blood sacrifice, and work sacrifice. The first sacrifice of works shows up with the first two children born to Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. Let me tell you about this story, okay? So God requires sacrifice. He is holy. He is, you know, he requires when they sin or when they, you know, to, to cleanse them at this point. They don't have Jesus Christ yet, right? So God says, bring me a sacrifice. And God had already... It had, been, it had been broken down, like I said, starting from Genesis, in the, in the psyche of man, that God required a blood sacrifice, and it had to be an innocent animal. This was a foreshadowing of Christ, his innocence. All right? So what happens is Abel brings a sacrifice that God accepts, and it's, it's, it's uh, here we see in this, this painting, clearly, the sacrifice that God accepted was a lamb, a ram. See, this is Abel. Now Cain wanted to do it his own way. He brought the fruit. He brought stuff he grew of the land. He thought that was a better sacrifice. That's not what God wanted. He didn't want works. See, this is the first division. We could cut it right down the middle here. We could rip it and see the very clear first division of the works way to get to God. I'm going to do it my own way. God did not accept that sacrifice. He didn't burn it up like he did um, to show his acknowledgement of it, his, his uh, re receiving of this sacrifice of love. This loving sacrifice to God, which was an innocent animal, which was the foreshadowing of Christ. Abel did what God wanted, which was in the foreshadowing of Christ, he brought an animal, which he did not work to get, okay? Yes, yeah, sure, he took care of the flock and everything, but he didn't, you know, he didn't birth the, the, the animal, he didn't, you know, he didn't toil and labor like his brother Cain did. Now, because we know that Cain's, therefore, the first murderer in the Bible, because he was so jealous of his brother Abel, he murdered him. All right, that's another story. This is the first rip where we see the first time where man is trying to get back to God through works, through his own works and this has been happening ever since then in every major religion now uh, we'll get a little bit more into the solution and Jesus Christ in the next one okay. oh a bongos bongos please oh I'm